Hello and welcome to another episode of To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a duck, and a degenerate. Before I say anything more, subscribe to the Patreon, just $5 a month, <laughs> well worth again. your money. <laughs> Not well, I'm going to do it every <laughs> single episode. No, I'm going to do it every single episode. Give it like, like 20, 20 seconds. Minecraft server. We just started a Minecraft server. Dolan Dark has been involved in that. I think I've it's going just really been well, better. so if you enjoy oh, Minecraft, you well. Yeah, I just that. saw a video of him pouring lava onto everyone and throwing diamonds in the lava yeah, pit. Yeah, so base, base, <laughs> sounds good, sounds good. If that's something you're into, definitely going to be worth your $5, so. And you get an exclusive Discord, and you get episodes early, you're going to get this episode early. This chill is way too long. Topics today. All right, I'm just. I'm trying to end it. I'm trying to end the shill here. Uh, okay, <laughs> topics today. We got Mr. Beast versus Irishman. We've got a family vlogger who's like abusing her children. Sounds like a pyro. <laughs> Sounds like fucking pyro, basically. That's every. That's, that's every that's family that's vlogger ever. <laughs> and we got Starfield, the video that just came out. It's kind of a mid game. I'll just say that. I mean, that's my. I haven't played it at all, but that's just my total overall impression. It's a pretty terrible game. Are we gonna open with Starfield? <laughs> kind of. You. What well, does it matter? I don't think it does it matter at this point. It's still pretty popular to shit on it i mean i i sunk like i think i've sunk like six or seven hours into it but yeah just it it's awful it's actually so bad and i know it's one of the games that it almost looks cool to hate but you, you've seen the screenshots i've been posting right like npcs looking at you like they're just fucking haunted or something bethesda did a, was selective with the reviewers that they gave the game to so like the scores so the score would be inflated on release all these critics that they thought may give it a low score didn't get an early release copy of the game so when they eventually review the game and give it a lower score, it doesn't matter, right? Because it's already, it's already like weeks after release. Everyone's already seen the hype. It, it's interesting you say that, actually, because all the reviews seem so positive. But then I played the game and I was just like, how the fuck are people like signing off on this? Like, I remember, I remember linking to you that reviewer G-Man Libs. And he literally called it Starfield as a phenomenal achievement. And then even saying at one point, like, page shill, the story page shill. pulled on his heartstrings or something. No, but that guy's usually pretty, like, he's pretty aggressive. Yeah, he's usually good. Yeah, because but, he got like, paid this was, time. That's why. He was literally sucking No, in all off. seriousness, in all seriousness, <laughs> what's the likelihood of them being paid off? Paid to show. I don't think paid. I think but it's like, high. I, I, no, it's high. No, it's high. No, I mean, we've always monetary. assumed that like IGN, big reviewers like that, they've been getting no, paid. No, it wouldn't be in a monetary to give more way. But more favorable reviews. If he shit on the game, he probably would have been blacklisted from future Bethesda games. Yeah, so that's probably that, why he was so it's positive. It's like you're not technically paid, but you almost feel like, oh, I was paid. You know, I was given it for free. If I give it a bad rating, I won't be sent this. Oh, so there's like an in incentive. The future, there's an incentive it's, there. Yeah, yeah to like not still, talk shit. Nah, I think I think it's more than that. I do agree with that. 100 percent agree with that. But I do think there is like more than that. I think they're being paid to show. Also, the reviews on Steam are hidden. By the way, have you seen that? The view. There's. I don't know how long it lasts, but the reviews on Steam you can't actually view. I don't know how they manage that, but you can't see. User I, I think reviews. it's because the game still isn't publicly available yet. It's only available oh, because okay. like. You actually have to pay more money to get the game early, like I did, because I'm a degenerate. But I think it comes out on the 6th, and then it came out three days early because of pre-order, you know, to get people to pre-order No, it. it was a digital premium edition. You literally had to pay more money, like oh. I did, just to get the game earlier, so that's just, yeah. <laughs> how much more How much more money did you have to pay to get it six days early or five days early? Or? I could check, actually. Hang on. Well, keep in mind, Pyro probably paid another 200 for the, check. like, blue skin or... The extra funny hat. Oh no, he'll get the ultimate edition, like, it'll come with like some kind of snow globe with all the little NPC characters in. Right, so, <laughs> to pre-purchase Starfield, it's 60 quid, and then the digital premium edition is 86 quid, fucking hell. I so 26 it quid to beta test the game I don't think it's release. bad, yeah. I don't think well, it's bad, well, it's not bad. I think we're going to be beta to testing it until the mods early. come in and fix it. 26 quid, it's not too bad. No, I thought it was three days. Oh, is that it? Fuck that then. <laughs> That's completely pointless. What else do you get in addition to this? You probably just get like a funny cape or something. I genuinely didn't look. <laughs> yeah. You probably get a cape, some weapon skins, just some garbage that I don't even... A lot of the streamers I watched reviewing it all said the story is really bad. Have you like, seen as well? By, like they Written by a teenager. Bethesda is just copy-paste studio. I mean, they've been copy-pasting their games for years. They've been releasing Skyrim for the last, like, 20 years or some shit. Well, not that long, but, like, a long time. They've been known to, like, reuse assets over and over again. In Skyrim, like, you're a dragonborn, some, like, character that can speak to dragons, and you can do, like, the funny shouts that, you know, lift people up and, you know, freeze they them. They just make like you that. a dragonborn again, <laughs> like, no, for no, no reason. No, no, but you're called... You, guess what you're called in the game. Have a guess. Starborn? <laughs> yeah, it's literally Starborn. Are you serious? Really? <laughs> Really? Like, you, you know that gif I put in the chat of the guy being frozen, right? That's one of the powers you get as a Starborn. 
Was that a total guess, Jay? Was that a total guess? I 100% guess. I I haven't seen That's anything. Genius. To- You're actually called <laughs> Starborn. I'm not even joking. Like, there's just no... What the hell? And then as well, like, you know, I, I, I played through the game a bit, and there are so many quests, it's insane, which was kind of refreshing, because I remember, like, in the Fallout games, there weren't too many quests. What? But then, like... What are you talking about? No, no, but there... There wasn't a lot of... If, if you go onto the wiki right now and look at the list of, like, side quests in Fallout games, like Fallout 3, there isn't a lot. There really isn't a lot. There's probably less than, like, 20 or something. There really isn't a lot. And then in Skyrim, they overdid it, and they just, like, had way too many quests. But one thing I don't like about the game is it is literally a loading screen simulator. It's like you'll get an objective... I thought it was an open world. Planet. Like, you could fly anywhere. No, no, but there's loading screens in between, like, each... So you'll go to a planet, you'll get a mission from someone, which will usually be to travel to another planet and talk to someone, and then travel <laughs> to another so planet. That's so fucking sad. Just travel a whole fucking journey across the solar system to get to one planet to talk to one person. Yeah. And you get a loading screen. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking, that <laughs> is a quest fucking, I just wrapped up. That sounds so fucking shit. Oh yeah, so you know in No Man's Sky, when you get in your ship, you can just kind of leave the planet, like, seamlessly. But in Starfield, it's a loading screen just to get off the planet. And then if you want to go to another planet, it's another loading screen. There was actually a woman, uh, I saw a Dexero article, and she basically, because people will fast travel to planets, because they don't want to, like, you know, travel all the way there. Because in No Man's Sky, you had this ability to jump into, like, hyper speed or hyperspace or something to get there quicker but you can't do that in starfield you can only like fast travel but this one woman she streamed herself flying from one planet to another to show that it isn't like a scam she spent like seven hours traveling to pluto (laughs) i mean at least she could fly there yeah and and then as soon as she arrived she just flew right through it amazing she just clipped into pluto like it didn't even register as a planet life is short and she did that i suppose she did it on a stream at least to like, so she was getting money or something at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, she would have been doing. But it imagine for like if content someone just like wasn't streaming it, just by themselves in their house, playing Starfield. It's like the day of release, and the first thing they do is like spend seven hours flying through an empty space, and they spent their time running around the whole planet, barren landscape, a fucking desert of nothing. I visited Earth in the game, which you can do, and it's it's so fucking boring. Like, I get it. Like, the entire lore of the game is Earth was abandoned because of, like, you know, global warming or whatever the fuck. So when you go there, it's just a huge sand desert. But the way every planet works that isn't, like, an actual human populated one, when you land anywhere, it will just generate a random, like, biome, look like a tile. And then if you go too far from that tile where you landed, you'll get the notification saying you've gone too far. So it just keeps generating, like, random tiles every time you land on a planet. Like, if you land anywhere on Earth, it'll all be desert. But then if you land anywhere, like, on a forest planet, it'll only be forest. And there's just nothing to do there. Like, I remember, like, I landed on Earth. I saw, like, the Shard, the, the London Shard that was, like, left as a monument. There was a, a, a sad little snow globe next to it I picked up. And then I just left. I was Wait, like, there was shit. actually a snow globe? No, yeah, yeah. And they, it's funny because they had those in Fallout New Vegas, which is considered, like, one of the better games that, well, they didn't make it, but they produced it. But that's actually considered like the best, one of the best like modern Fallout games. And they, the only thing they copied from New Vegas is just the fucking snow globe. It's, it's like dialogue as well. Like, like dialogue in the game is, like, yeah, this is the last thing I'll bring up because I don't want to waffle too long. But like, the, the dialogue in the game is fucking ass. Like, I remember people in giving Fallout Four shit because Fallout Four was literally just say yes, say no, or like give a sarcastic answer, you know, like a Marvel Avengers one-liner thing. But in this, all you do is ask a question which gives more context and then just proceed. That's it. That, that, like, like, I'm not just like, it takes me like five or six hours in a game to start skipping the dialogue. I was actually skipping it before I left the tutorial area because the dialogue is just so fucking boring. So is there actually anything good about the game? Like if you had to say one positive thing about the game, what would it be? The snow globe. <laughs> In all seriousness, though. I, I can't... I, I genuinely can't say anything. I know it's cool to is hate the on the game. Is the combat at least good? I mean, is the combat at least good? No, I, I was about to say, the combat's fucking ass. It just feels so floaty and weightless. I mean, to be fair, like, Bethesda's always been really bad with, like, you know, ranged combat in games. I mean, Fallout 4 was all right. But it's possible. It's possible. I, I thought this would be a huge step up from that, but... Like, in this, it just, everything feels so, like, weightless. Well, you're in fucking space, so that might be fucking why. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a positive. <laughs> Do you get, like, any superpowers, special powers? Because obviously in Skyrim, you could, like, you're starborn. fire on someone. Well, no, I told you the Starborn, the, the Starborn thing where you can just, like, freeze people. Just freeze them? <laughs> can you, yeah, can you do anything else? Just freeze time. It's not even freezing time, it's just the game stuttering. I imagine you can manipulate gravity, right? That's surely got to be a thing. I think you get one where you can, like, blind enemies as well, kind of like, but that is literally just a fucking flashbang, and they've been in games since, like, 2003. Grab a torch and just, like, flash it in their face really fast. You don't need a superpower for that. 
I'm noticing as well, like, I don't think there's any difficulty sliders for the game, so I'm just finding the, the entire game, like, way too easy. Well, that's good. No, no, it's not, though, because it's if like... It's shit, if the difficulty is shit, that's a separate issue. But I hate it when Bethesda games have different difficulty sliders. Slide it all the way down to just, like, you're not even playing a game anymore. The game's it's too easy, though. Like, I'm not... You know, I'm just, like, breezing through it. It's yeah, like, too easy. I, I do this one quest... I mean, that's quest. a separate issue. If the difficulty is off, then that's a I, I do problem. this one quest where, like... I uh, had to go undercover for someone, and then I had to go to a new system, and the systems are actually ranked. It's it's kind of like any Bethesda game, where you'll start in like the middle of the map, and that's where the easy game is, and then the further you travel to the edges of the map, that's when it's like enemies are more scaled up. So I was like level six, and then I traveled into a zone that was like level twenty, and I just still like demolished all <coughs> all of them. I think I died once, but like I just save scummed it and just won. So the game's an early access now. So, like you said, the reviews for users don't get published so by the time this episode comes out the user reviews will be out so what do you reckon it's going to get in, on metacritic because there is a lot of people on twitter who do like the game it's going to be last of us 2 it's definitely going to be last not of us that, 2 not like, that la, la, last of us 2 was like i think it's going to get like a like a 5 5.9 or something <laughs> i did i did hear the game is not running that badly though which is quite rare for a PC release, <laughs> like a AAA no, no, that, PC that's release. That's one thing I'll admit. I, I've had no crashes. It it runs really, really smooth. I'm getting like, you know, I can run everything on Max. I'll be, the game's really weird because like parts of it look really, really good, like almost photorealistic, but then other parts just look awful. It, I've never played a game that's more like divisive like that. It, it's like when I'm watching uh, people speak and shit, like obviously it's not mo or anything. It's pre like procedural animations because they couldn't, you know, you couldn't expect like a Last of Us cutscene quality for every single person. That would just cost fucking billions. But sometimes when they move their mouth, they, they almost do these little mannerisms where like, you know, only part of their mouth will pick up. It's like an asymmetrical mouth and shit. And then I, I noticed that and it's like, damn, this actually looks really good. But then other times they'll just like, you know, do, do like a soy face and they just won't even like load the next bit of dialogue. I just saw that guy crying about pronouns. Why That's was he crying really again? Was it literally it? just because the pronouns option at the beginning of the game? He launched the game and it makes you, doesn't it make you choose between... Like, they, he, or she. I, I just saw it and I was like, oh yeah, like, that's a feature, whatever. But like, yeah, it's it's funny because you had people, like, shitting on the game for having it. But so then many games. They would shit on the games. I mean, it's literally just like asking Baldur's Gate 3 that literally has the exact to same features. She. I mean, there aren't that many people complaining about it, are there? I just saw that one bold British guy. Well, that guy went viral for the rage baiting. That There was this one part that was, that made me laugh because, like, you know... The, the guy's definitely a fucking worm, but he still called this one bit. There was like this one female character that opened Wait, up to him. Wait, why was he a worm? Why was he a worm? And she says to him, like, oh, there's something I've got. Work rage. Oh, just, it was so obviously just rage baiting, like getting so angry and stuff. Like, but yeah, you had, uh, I think at one point, the, the same guy, the guy that looks like a Wojak, and then he was uh, playing the game. And this one female character opens up about, like, who, like, who she truly is. And then he says, like, oh, what, you're going to tell me you're a man or something and then like literally that the woman admits that she was based off a clone of a man or something like replicated or something and i was just like literally saying what he called but in such a long-winded way i hear the game has a fucking black lives matter mural i think I every game that. needs it these <laughs> what, days a black lives matter mural apparently it's like hidden <laughs> yeah, at the corner like... of the galaxy in like a cave and it's like a little easter egg dedication to black lives matter or something like that i mean like that doesn't surprise me you probably got like uh I mean I remember in Fortnite in Fortnite they had a uh, that play like on the projector like a Martin Luther King speech and all the kids were using the animation to throw rotten fruit at it like Based. you're just always going to get people doing shit like they had that to remove the whip crack emote and like 14 different variations of monkey emojis when they did that holy beast that's not based. you can't say that <laughs> yeah that actually makes sense can so can so i swear it's like if you give anyone a reason to start shit like that they just will like they will always find a way it's actually amazing yeah. i just it's just so funny seeing twitter going so because they they know it sells right too with the pronouns complaining about it but it's just funny when it's like how early games had that like pokemon pokemon crystal had that in like 2001 you know are you a boy or a girl it's like <laughs> It's basically I, just I think that. It's just the day, then, people are molding. If if it was just she, her, he, him, I don't think anyone would have cared. But yeah, because you've got the non-binary one, people started boohooing. Well, the most recent one was the fucking Hogwarts Legacy one, right? You could choose to be a witch or a wizard. Gryffindor. So like, you could be a guy. You could be like a male body in the female dormitories, as I recall. I know, Jet. <laughs> you tried that. You definitely tried that. That was an interesting one because, because you know, there was such an anti-trans 
movement against the game. Based. But then they actually had all this... <laughs> but then they had all this trans-friendly stuff, right? But most people that were playing it and, you know, saying, ignore the trans people, et cetera, et cetera, were just kind of like pretending that wasn't there. You know, they would normally complain about that stuff. But because the game was so hated by trans people, they're just like... Yeah, <laughs> I won't. I won't mention that. There was a transgender there was NPC the bar, or something the like that. There was, there yeah, was, yeah, it was in the uh, Hogsmeade Tavern. The bartender. You're yeah. the fucking butter beer, mate. <laughs> 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 Weren't they actually voiced by like a trans person as well? Imagine if it was just someone pretending. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember her name. I can't. Literally, like the game was fine, but I genuinely can't remember a single fucking thing about it. And I, it came out in what February. <laughs> this uh, this fat bold British bloke is going on about the whole woke element to Starfield. And he hasn't chosen the best example because obviously like loads of other video games have done this. You know, they found a Black Lives Matter mural tribute to Rosa Parks, that one black kid that died. Trayvon did, Martin? Did you just get that other people the... saying, I am not basing this on my own Oliver experience. Oliver just got it game, from like, you it. definitely woke got that news from the on Twitter, Twitter or something. Or something. <laughs> I think it's probably Twitter. He didn't even back it up. Like that sounds like stuff he'd say. I think I got it from Twitter, yeah. yeah. I think it was Fucking, Twitter, yeah. Yeah, it seems very biased. Yeah, did the guy who posted it, <laughs> did he have a Pepe as his Twitter picture or the cops and Wojak, maybe? Maybe that's why there was no pushback. He might have done, yeah. Might have done. I don't know why you're criticizing it. You spend like most of your fucking life on 4chan, so what are you even going on about? No, just silence. Dead fucking silence after that. I don't that. know what 4chan you is. Fucking... What website's that? How many hours do you spend there a day? How many hours do you spend there a I day? Don't know, like eight? I don't know that website You admitted is. it, self-admitted it the other website? day. What website? Spending like six to seven hours per day on 4 Four what? He was browsing at like three o'clock in the fucking morning last night. And we were supposed to be recording at this time as well, by the way. So he was just completely skipping on that to browse fucking 4chan, cut your throat. No, I was sleeping and then you that woke me up. That is a fucking lie. You retard. My phone buzzed and I was like, oh, is it like family group chat? In fact, I can no, prove it colossal. right now. Because I took a screenshot <laughs> at the time. Oh my god, wait, he doesn't turn his phone off when he goes to bed. No, but oh you did though, god. you did though. Did you not no turn way. it off when you went to bed last night? You did. Oh my god, sorry for not putting my phone in a glass box and turning it off. Oh my god, sorry man. <laughs> Oliver doesn't turn his phone off. His phone's just so old it runs out of battery. A little vibration is not going to wake me up. <laughs> You're forgetting Oliver, Pyra's phone was in his asshole. <laughs> of course it was. I mean, there was probably a picture of a naked child on the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on. Yeah, we can't put it in. Yes, we That's can. Like we're putting it in. Shut the like, fuck up. We're putting it in. Phone we're putting it in. The fucking... Yeah. So is that everything we have to say about Starfield? Mid-game. We said it was well, going to be shit. I said it was going to be shit highly. before it even came out on the Patreon episode. $5 a month. Worth well, no, subscribing to that. You can hear the opinion. You can hear how straight. I was right in my prediction. Everything we predicted. I mean, it's not, it's not predict that hard so to predict yeah, it that it would be bad. Because Bethesda have a track history of this. But I think Bethesda we'll get a have bit of pushback in the comments. Bethesda have historically so many times before. Why the fuck do people still expect anything from them. If the Todd Howard, the point. CEO, whatever the fuck of Bethesda, has said and done all these things before, why again will you trust his, take his fucking word for it? We're getting a little pushback in the comments. I still think there's a lot of people who are enjoying it. Oh, you enjoy floating around empty space, visiting dead fucking lifeless worlds, empty desert planets with fucking- I like how Colossal's the most vocal despite having no hours on the game. I mean, I wasn't one of the many that received a free copy of the game. I wasn't paid to like, shill it, so the most I have vocal, absolutely no and obligation he's too to much play it. I'm never going to play it. The they should have given me the money <laughs> yeah, instead of some other fucking toad. Yeah, and maybe I would have said something nice about the game. It, I still probably said. wouldn't have, to be honest, but at least like it would Just be more shameless, like shamelessly shilling or rather they can pay me not to say anything bad about it i mean that's fair that's fair speaking of shills do we want to do a sponsor no i've got i actually can't fit any more money in my bank account can we skip this one <laughs> Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your laptop exposed at the coffee shop table while you run to the bathroom. Most of the time, you're probably fine. But what if one day you come out of the bathroom and your laptop is gone? Every time you connect to an encrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, passwords, financial details, etc. Doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone, just some cheap hardware is needed, a smart 12-year-old could do it. 
Pyro, your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. Why use ExpressVPN? Well, it creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. Hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It's super secure. It'd take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. It's so easy to use. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. It works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more, so you can stay secure on the go. So secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash tbh. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash tbh. And you can get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash tbh. But yeah, protecting yourself from nefarious individuals. I mean, that's what ExpressVPN is for. It's really great for that. But you wanted to talk about a YouTuber who, I guess, wasn't using ExpressVPN uh, because one of these nefarious individuals targeted him and he's been stalking him. Is it a group or is it just one person? One guy. Basically, a, a guy called Vince Vintage made... He made a video He made about- a video about hackers. He tried to interview one of the hackers. The hacker was like, no, I'm not doing that. And also, you probably shouldn't do the video anyway. Vince does the video anyway, and the guy's basically just been, like, stalking him ever since, doing false takedowns on his channel The hacker's called Sinet, I think his name was, and he's just mentioned in the video. Like, it's not- the video's not all about him, and he's just one of the people mentioned. He's getting this because he reached out to the guy on Twitter before the video asking for an interview, and the guy declined, but he still made the video, which, you know, fair enough. In terms of the stalking, how has he been stalking um, this, oh yeah, this so, YouTuber? So, sorry, the hacker said tweeting at him, like, Daily or hourly, even. Um, what type of messages? That the hacker space knows where you are. They've got your number, stuff like that. Just alluding, he's gonna get. So Vince fucked. Vintage just blocked him because you know, fair enough. And then just shortly after he blocked him, he received a f false copyright takedown from like some random dude, which was you know clearly this hacker pretending to be someone else. Um, so he had to counter it, of course, and you have to give your full government name. Ah, okay. It's so yeah, he got baited. Yeah. Well, no, the thing is, is this Vince guy was smart about it, where he actually had already hired, an, like, an attorney. Okay. And he, so he tried submitting the counter takedown with his attorney's name, but because the name was different to what was on his AdSense account, he had to actually put his full government name through. And so after he did that, you know, clearly this guy now has his name. And... One of the things he did was he actually somehow found this Vince guy's fiance and text her and just said something like, hey, babe, I broke my phone. This is my new number. Just really, you know, really odd shit like that. But the fact that he even managed to find like his fiance's number was pretty, pretty messed. The, he, he also then received like three more copyright strikes on his channel from this, you know, clearly the same guy. And then he's just worried. He's basically just worried for his life. He actually... Well, I wouldn't say like, you know, he's worried about... He's worrying about his private life being invaded, which is a very viable, yeah. you know... So he's moved out of his current house because, you know, he doesn't know what this guy's capable of. He's just, he's some, like, 37-year-old dude living in his mum's basement, unironically. Oh, with so much fucking time... Yeah, I know the time. There's so much fucking time on their hands. They have a vendetta. And they have no morality to speak of. They're one step away from killing themselves. Well, yeah, so Vince... They have just, like, no... Yeah, go on. You, you say that, which is spot on, because Vince actually hired a... He hired a private investigator, you know, because he wanted to know what the fuck this guy was doing and, like, everything about him. And he'd actually had a suicide attempt, like, the previous year. And Vince mentioned, said he mentioned that only because clearly the guy has nothing to lose. Like, that's why he's that much more worried. Too much time on their fucking hands. They're one step away from killing themselves. They don't mind if you end up in the, uh, in the inferno yourself. This guy is being helped. I mean, the community, he seems to be thanking people Algorithm here in the suite. So the video up too. Um, Mudahar covered it. I didn't see, I don't think Critical covered it. Pyro's, I think, about to cover it. Hi. I, don't, I doubt YouTube will change anything because I swear this sort of stuff's happened many times in the past where like people are like, why do I have to give my full name and address? YouTube doesn't like to get involved with legal stuff like that because they think they're just going to open like a whole window of like thousands of people coming to them. I mean, yeah, like the, the counter copyright claim system is so stupid. I'm amazed they haven't changed it. So like 
when I was doing YouTube like five, six years ago, like when I was doing the leafy surf <laughs> and now dog you shit, just do I'd have people like stroke my videos. Shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah just no gameplay. Now it's face cam. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And there's no fake deep voice as well. But like when I had copyright strokes on my channel, there was one time when I filled in my, it, it says you got to fill in your full legal name and I assume it wouldn't go through otherwise. So I did that. And then you've got to put in your address and stuff. And the guy who I filed the counterclaim to who struck my video, you know, he started emailing me like my full name and my home address. Uh, you put your full saying, address. Like, I've got your address too, yeah. now, buddy. You Why wouldn't you? Like, Why wouldn't you? That's what it's asking for. You want to be, and this is a legal thing. Yeah, yeah, because that's yeah. Yeah. a legal do, thing. But obviously, yeah, now, you don't want like, to be a fraud. So, oh, yeah, see what you mean, you Colossal. Think it would, it'd be 11, a 11 minutes ago, he tweeted that. But how does this always happen? Every loophole, time we have to cover though. something, we get a live update. But he said, 11 minutes ago, the copyright situation has been handled thanks to you, thanks to everyone who helped out. But clearly, you know, the issue of this weirdo hasn't been solved, but at least the YouTube stuff's solved. That's good. It's good that Slop, Slop actually yeah, does something. Yeah, I imagine the guy would just kind of... Yeah. Is he American, this guy? Yeah, some benefit to Slop. Is, yeah. is he American? He's, He's American. American. I always feel fucking bad for Americans who have to deal with this shit, because in the UK, you know, you don't have swatting. And you contact the police and they guns. sort it out. But that's another, yeah. another yeah. discussion. <laughs> True, although, you know, it doesn't stop anyone from stabbing each other in the face, you know, so... <laughs> Not that different. Yeah, just put a fake name, give a fake address. If you ever get a copyright claim, don't put your real shit. It's not I think worth you still it. have to put your actual name that's on your AdSense, but you can get away with putting a fake address. That's what I've done in the past. Like, And then if YouTube are going to be like, well, you should have put your real name. We're going to ban your account because of that. You can put your real address. You should have done that. And you're like, well, I'm not going to do that because of this reason. Yeah, just uh, I use my management's address like the, the building that so they they'll from. get fucked and not yeah they'll allowed. get firebombed that, that, <laughs> no no but no one would actually yeah no one's gonna actually care if like a management building's address gets leaked though right like who cares i thought you were but, gonna like, say yeah, they, no they one's gonna to care if like because that's pretty much what every killed, as long as the big huge as long as the big youtube is fine <laughs> <They get> bombed <laughs> i guess actually if he's already responded now you can include that in your slop video <laughs> i want to kill myself like like every time i have like a day or two off from doing slop that's when like the biggest fucking top topics go down oh yeah you missed like, the oh, edp fuck, thing even i you missed, missed that. so much stuff speaking of people killing themselves <laughs> whatever you're gonna segue into do not segue. i genuinely don't know <laughs> oh speaking of killing themselves edp big black um pedophile <laughs> you can relate yep that's yep it's probably a better yep. thing to say yep have you guys saw? I know it only just happened yesterday. I I, well, I just don't think he has any. He's close to dying. I just don't isn't think he? he has any shame because he's been caught again. Yeah, they caught he's him a outside liver, a kidney and clinic. He was apparently given like six months to live. Maybe he's maybe he's trying to go out with a big bang. Like he's just gonna like nonce as many kids as he can before yeah, he dies. Exactly. He's got Jesus. limited time. He's just. He's just gonna go for it. Yeah, it's crazy that he got caught again. I remember seeing Mutaha talk about it, and even he made a good point, just saying like, after you got caught something doing something like that, like you're a social pariah, your reputation's he didn't fucked. Care. But you'd at least know to, you know, holy shit, holy shit, I got away with it. Now I can just like just never show my face again. But no, he's <laughs> literally done it again. It's crazy. Yeah, Jadeon, uh, he said he was sat on that video for like a month and the only reason he dropped it is because the girl actually came out about it herself. But the interesting thing is like that girl wasn't a decoy. So Jadeon said like EDP was lurking his Discord server and then he started to hit on like one of the girls in his server. Like imagine just not caring to that extent. Like he, it's almost like he was just I think he just doesn't cool. care at all. The last yeah, time he never faced any rants. repercussions because last time it was a YouTuber sting, right? Which interferes with like the justice system in some yeah. way. Yeah, so hopefully, like Chris... hopefully that doesn't happen this time because Judeon was involved. Yeah, it's like the Chris Hansen stuff though. Like they uh, they had to work with law enforcement because what they would do is like the pedos, they would literally just argue and say Which it was entrapment. Was technically, yeah. So they had to work with law enforcement to like get it actually started. Yeah, it's just, it's just bizarre he got caught again. And obviously it was outside like a kidney clinic as well, which is just really Dialysis. bizarre. Dialysis, yeah. But the fact that they were able to get that information and intercept as well, they're probably doing some low-key doxing on him. He seems this sort of person, like, he gets a message from someone and he'll give them his address to meet up to have sex within, like, a day. Oh, yeah, don't... Like, he doesn't seem... Don't forget the shit pictures as well, where he just sent pictures of his shit. Oh, uh, yeah, just... Yeah. In the toilet. Wait, What? Yeah, apparently a lot of the people, he, the victims he preyed on, he would send pictures of his shit in the toilet. 
I, I don't even okay, think I don't it know was if like he was his... proud of proud of it or it was a way of his, his way of flirting. Yeah, I, I don't even think it was for like a, a kink or anything. I genuinely just think he was that much of a fucking moron. He was like, yeah, I'm gonna take a shit and send it to kids. That's fine. There's nothing weird with that. No, there's got to be some kind of fetish element to that. There's got to be. Why else would you send pictures of your own fucking shit to children you're trying to groom? Because he's a moron. It's it's like, you know, he he's claimed so many ways that... Okay, so the first time he got stung for the cupcake, he actually coped at one point saying that... Oh, Ryan, why the fuck? I've just seen the picture now. Why the fuck would you post that? We're not going to include it in the fucking <laughs> video. I like that. What, what's up? What are you doing? <laughs> picture of I shit. I just like... <laughs> I just like the previous context. He says, yo, what's up? And they say nothing much, watching Netflix. And his response is just <laughs> dropped a mean ass shit with a fucking giant shit streak in a toilet bowl. Yeah, that there's not enough water in there. Insanity. That water bowl is very oh fucking God, shallow. The toilet so bowl is You're so still shallow. looking at the picture? <laughs> yeah, because he hasn't fucking deleted it yet. You've got to delete it. No, I would need, I'll need it for the context. <laughs> oh, for the video? Um, yeah, but you have to censor it. Yeah, just put a picture of Pyro's face over it. I mean, it's basically the same thing. But, like, he, he coped. Uh, he kept making different excuses. Like, he was framed. It was a lookalike. And then at one time, he actually said it was him, but he was, like, acting to play a pedophile or something. And they didn't tell him it was oh, real. Was like method acting yeah, for his latest like, role. <laughs> imagine if Daniel Day Lewis had said this. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. It's so it's crazy though, right? Because like I remember when he got when he got stung, he was crying and shit. Like he knew his life was over. Like even if the police didn't get involved, but like then he just does it again. It's like he's got a fucking compulsion or something. It's crazy. And then he was just gonna keep... die. He's probably just gonna die. Oh yeah, that that I, I'm not joking. <laughs> You, you've actually got a point there, because if he's been told, like, Walter White, he's only got, like, you know, six months left to live. Yeah, there was one uh, clip that was great of him and a call uh, EDP basically saying he's innocent, he didn't do anything wrong. And then Gideon joins the call. Like, he was there all along, but pretending to be someone else. He turns on his face cam saying, I got you, I got you. We filmed you, we filmed you. And then he just, EDP leaves the call instantly because he knows he can't, <laughs> he can't clap back or anything. I feel like him being involved will just make it hard for law enforcement to have a case again yeah i'm not sure how it works but yeah you might be right jay he is working with a uh, skeeter gene though and skeeter gene does yeah, he's do... like the better chris hansen he's yeah like... he does uh like the thing is he'll mock uh i've seen him a lot on tiktok he will mock pedos that he catches as well he doesn't treat it with like respect and shit which is fair i mean like that's that's deserved well i know that my interview i did with lion maker uh was used in the court case against him in fact it helped in the conviction against him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. I don't know in what capacity, but that's just what the victim told me. One of the victims. Because stuff he said actually was... Because from memory, he just didn't admit to anything. I'm surprised they actually got anything out of it. I have no idea. But I think it's because they were able to prove that he was lying then, so he couldn't then therefore lie during his legal testimony, I guess. I'm guessing. I'm totally guessing. But yeah, apparently the video actually helped in the guilty verdict. Have you seen the skeptics as well saying how like the whole thing is probably just like a stunt, like it's not even real and they're working with EDP? Like, could you imagine being that fucking stupid? Because imagine like Skeeter Jones, this guy known for exposing pedos, is like, oh no, we, we just got like one pedo who tried to meet with one kid, but the next one was fake, it's fine. They all just start laughing. Speaking of molesting your children... <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't actually molest them, did she? She just abused them. <laughs> it's not like actually... Why are you guys laughing? Why are Set you laughing? Set your segue into the other topic. Why are you laughing? Why are you what laughing? What do you mean? About why that? am I laughing? Like all I hear is you say. <laughs> Speaking of molesting your children, <laughs> you can't take the moral high ground that we laughed at that. Oh shit! I dropped my mint. Anyways, Ruby Frank, a family YouTuber arrested for child abuse. I said two K. Why am I laughing at this? <laughs> Family YouTuber arrested for child abuse as two kids are hospitalized. <laughs> You're fucking worse than me and Niall. I can't, I cannot. What the fuck? <laughs> arrested for child abuse. <laughs> Why do you have these sound effects now? The arrested for child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was arrested arrested for child abuse. Do you guys know what she actually did? Can you stop? No, it's, it's not going to be in the fucking video. Does not go stop here. putting clapping sound effects. Stop putting fucking clapping sound effects on your soundboard. Yeah, Ruby Frank, a YouTuber 
Like she's one of those fucking family <laughs> vloggers, right? They're all like messed in the head. I don't know why they want their children out there publicly 24 <laughs> seven, just to make money off them. I mean, it's pretty standard really. Child was found. A child. Stop, stop, stop. You cannot play funny trumpet sound effect. Seinfeld clapping while we're talking about this. I'm leaving it in the video, by the way. I'm leaving it in. The child was found with like duct tape on his ankles, his wrists. He had open wounds, like open sores. <laughs> Ooh. No. <laughs> Okay. Every time. <laughs> he was like half starved. He was like malnourished. And the neighbors found him. Um, and then also they found the daughter. Oh my god. I'm out. I'm going to the fucking pisser. <laughs> fuck this shit. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. Kill yourself. I'm seriously like, what the fuck? <laughs> Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports brackets DFS platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks adds a ton of excitement to the sports viewing experience. Watch your progress update in real time. Win up to 25 times your entry amount and cash out your winnings with quick scoring, settling, and withdrawals. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Our producer Ryan tried the app out. He said that it was a slick experience. The interface reminded him of a few fantasy leagues he had competed in before, except this one was more intuitive. He also said that they had more sports than just football. He noticed they had fantasy cricket, tennis, major league baseball, and even CSGO fantasy teams. So go to prizepicks.com slash TBH and use code TBH for a first deposit match up to $100. Go to prizepicks.com dot com slash tbh and use code tbh for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy with the busy fall season already in swing you might be looking for wholesome convenient meals for jam-packed days factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Too busy this fall to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and and nutritional quality you need. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. Adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 34 plus weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals, ready to eat in two minutes. Level up with gourmet plus options, prepared to perfection by chefs, and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients. Ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. We offset 100% of our delivery emissions, source 100% renewable electricity for our production sites and offices, and feature sustainably sourced seafood in our meals. Head to factormeals.com slash tbh50 and use code tbh50 to get 50% off. That's code TBH50 at factormeals.com slash TBH50 to get 50% off. All right, next topic now. What is it? The Mr. Beast has Crohn's disease. 
That's a good segue. I don't think it's that funny that he has Crohn's disease. I didn't say it's funny. Like a life debilitating. I mean, you keep making the jokes. It's so. not a joke. It's a statement. Okay, why do you call him Mr. Crohn's then? <laughs> Imagine someone was just calling you like Mr. Cancer, like because you had cancer. <laughs> Haven't they made up now? Yeah, that's the best the thing. They made up yeah. 19 hours of the entire drama. Not even a 24-hour drama. Well, it's like how people say, like, I'm taking a break off Twitter for my mental health, and then you'll see that they're liking tweets two hours later, and then they'll tweet something 18 hours later. But yeah, they. Uh, I think Mr. Beast said they squashed it, and then Jacksepticeye replied with a little cowboy emoji, probably through gritted teeth, but yeah. I just like how so many YouTubers just hate each other and they have to resort to sniding like that. It was it really a snide if he just outright says, I well, dislike yeah, Mr. Beast? He did a lie detector thing with Tommy in it because Jacksepticeye hangs out with all the Minecrafters because they all live in Brighton. It's like a hotspot for I mean, all the does, does he actually hang out with them or is this like a one-off one -off uh, thing? Oh, no, he, he, do, he regularly does content with okay, them at least. Right. Like He's appeared in like uh, half a dozen videos at least and you'll see them on like Insta and like... Okay. Uh, you know, and Insta pictures and stuff. Like, they do hang out, I guess. Because, you know, PewDiePie isn't in Brighton anymore. He fucked off to Japan. So Jack basically place just found like a new group, I guess. Yeah, he went to place Japan. But he did a lie detector test. He's done it before, but this is when he's stuck on his second channel. So no one really actually, like, noticed it. But obviously someone screen capped Sean, Jacksepticeye, being asked, like, what do you oh think of Oh my god, do you Beast? know him on a full name, first name uh, basis? I'm best friends with him. New friends? I, I, met, I actually met him in one... Uh, I met him in person for five minutes, so yeah... What on did a first he do? Basis. Uh, he actually, he hugged me. Did he just give you some uh, coffee beans? No, no, he hugged me, and then I'm pretty sure he actually gave me COVID. Because I felt like That's shit kind of awesome. You should have that. clickbaited that for a slop video. He got asked if he hates him, he said yes, and then he gets asked why, and he basically says, like, because he's ruined the landscape of YouTube. Like, like he's basically saying YouTube isn't fun anymore, it's more of a business. And then he said, if Mr. Beast enjoyed the videos he'd make, he'd make them longer. Which I thought was and a you'd huge see cut. the fun. Yeah, that was a stupid take. The funny yeah. thing is, is majority of people were actually on Jacksepticeye's side on Twitter. Really? I, well, I thought it was the other way around. No, I mean, d I guess depending on your circle, but that was the. I saw a lot more people being like, "Mr. Beast was out of pocket." For yeah, that. he's got a diehard following though, Jacksepticeye. He's got like the market, and, you know, the little stands and Twitter and stuff. doesn't like Mr. Beast because he's rich. <laughs> yeah, that so as he's well. got that working against. So it's Jacksepticeye. Uh, yeah, I was going mean, to say so they're literally Jack. both rich. Like it's it's. Like oh yeah, but I guess because his content's not about being rich, they're like, it's fine, Mr. Beast. We we'll put Mr. Beast on the cross, but. Jacksepticeye's fine. They squashed it pretty quickly, but yeah, I just think the points, like, obviously, when Jacksepticeye said that stuff, it wasn't, like, premeditated or anything. He kind of just said it, so he fumbled it a little I bit. I mean, it sounded I like something that had come up in conversation, and then that's why Tommy in it questioned him about it. That was, like, the... That was a vibe I got. Yeah, it felt like a setup. Yeah, It felt setup. like it had been premeditated. Sort of like. yeah. I, I guess his answer probably was a bit on the fly. I mean, he was also probably hamming it up a little bit for content, or knowing it was... You know, he wanted to be a bit controversial, but... Yeah, wanted to get shared and stuff. I mean, I kind of saw it as like... I think they're, they're wrong on both sides. Obviously, I, oh yeah, we did, I didn't even mention Mr. Beast's reply on Twitter saying like, you know, I could bring up Jacksepticeye's content, but I'm going to be the bigger man. It's like, well, you're not the bigger man if you just mention yeah, that you're going to be the bigger man. Yeah, as soon as you say you're the bigger man, you're not. It's like fucking Game of Thrones when Joffrey says he's the king. Like, if you say you're the king, you're not the king. Like, that's how I saw that. it. I've noticed that a lot with Mr. Beast, though. It's like, because he can't punch down because he literally is the biggest YouTuber. He'll get actually quite spiteful when any criticism is like, I think you know, landed his way. I think it's because he just sees, like, you know, you see how much criticism there is of him on Twitter. He just lets it get to him, which is the fucking one thing you don't want to do. It's, or, you know, he replies to people quite a lot. And you just, like, you just shouldn't. You should just leave them to wallow around in their own filth. To be fair, some of the criticism that he has received has been so fucking ridiculous. Oh, most of it is. I imagine at some point... <laughs> yeah, most of it. So I imagine, like, he reacts to it like, oh, no, not this fucking Replying shit Replying to it just adds, you know, they, it's not it's not proving anything... Draws to more attention to it, but... ...criticizing him. To be fair, like, how much does he actually respond to, though? Percentage-wise, like it's going to be less than one oh, yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. like, it's going to be less than one percent. He'll reply to some of the ones that actually bang, but then yeah, he'll pretty much always just, end up yeah. deleting the tweet. Well, the crazy thing about this is that he didn't delete his tweet. Original poster of this tweet, this Wolfmaster the Third furry pirate, maybe no. Hi. He actually hid, or she, yeah. I don't know, who gives a fuck, hid Mr. Beast's reply. I think they were a diehard Jacksepticeye fan, and uh, also on the on our server, pretty much a lot of people were like. 
blatantly on Jack Septicai's side. And then our initial our initial take was just like Mr. Beast was in the right. I thought he was in the right, yeah. Jack's all right. I mean, he's usually pretty level-headed. But yeah, I think he was off on this one. I don't know what he was talking about with this one. He's just off his meds today Left or something. Sit, like both sides. Like Mr. Beast didn't have to be like so snide in his reply. But then like Jack Septicai should have done it in the first place it was one of those sort of situations i mean it's one of those situations where it's like who gives a fuck i think fuck, the tag was but, stupid uh, also, saying his content should be longer it's like well it's easy to say that when your content is let's plays and you know mr beast you could say mr yeah. beast content is like kind of soulless because it's so like perfection you know he's like got it down to a t you know he analyzes every minute of his video to make sure it's like the perfect amount for the algorithm well if you watch his videos like after you say that like one thing i've noticed about them now it, it's almost like watching just a long tiktok because there's yeah. just so much going on every couple of seconds because he's so terrified of the watch time going down like it it's needs the, to be maximum. It, like they'll show three times keep sticking around where i've put the lamborghini in a shredder you know they'll sh they gotta keep people you put it up three hour let's plays of video games to say make the content longer <laughs> let's play as like back when uh they were peaking they do like they turn one horror game into like a 30 oh, part God. series and each part would be like Pudibai, eight to ten didn't minutes didn't he have like 300 happy wheels episodes yeah or yeah exactly they'd make it like eight to ten minutes or like 12 minutes but now because there's been such a shift they'll turn it into a long form because that watch time is so important so like when people play like when jack or mark play a horror game now oh, they'll usually God. one shot it they'll just do it in like a one two hour stream and then do it as yeah, a one-off video just, because that is much more profitable. It was definitely a bit a bit of like spite and bitterness because it's like Jack is doing the same thing and his views are probably maybe less than what they were a couple of years ago. But, but but that's what happens with YouTube. It's peaks and valleys. You'll always go up, you'll always go down. You know, but Jack will pretty much always be eternal because he's yeah got those foundations of that fan base. He's definitely not falling off at all. But I think it came from a place of bitterness. I, I did a video on this today and I actually said, uh, you know, it, it's like when iDubs did the content cup on Leafy. Like, you can say that content cup was warranted, but that was definitely born out of bitterness and jealousy. Because it's like... Ah, uh, just you the see view, because Leafy was getting so many views for such Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was content. getting so many views for just, like, dog shit. And obviously, it's different with Mr. Beast. But yeah, it like, is yeah, different, because seen... his content's actually high, high yeah. quality. Yeah. I don't even agree, to be honest. I don't even agree. I hate it when other YouTubers say, oh, you're just better, you're jealous, or whatever, when you criticize another YouTuber who gets higher views than you, who's got more subscribers than you. I feel like that's just a fucking cope. I mean, maybe there is a bit of jealousy. I mean, I don't think there is, but if it would be, it would be because video gaming or gaming on YouTube in general has been diminished in the algorithm, I think intentionally for whatever reason I cannot possibly say. I don't agree with that. No? No, I just, I just think times have changed. It, it, it's like how content is always being more focused towards short form. Like I said earlier, like Mr. Beast's videos are literally just like widescreen 16 by nine TikToks. Like, they're, they're literally just widescreen TikToks because there's just so much going on. But, like, you know, I'm looking at Jacksepticeye's latest video he just uploaded, and it's, like, a very drawn-out, slow Let's Play of a horror game. Like, he's reading all the text he finds in the game, all the little journals and stuff. And a lot of people just have that on his background. It, it, it's like my stuff, right? Like, like my, my game reviews... That, that's about video games, but they still do, like, really well. Like, Cruelty Squad's different. nearly on, like... It's six... different. No, it's not. Of course it's fucking different. Yeah, but my videos aren't, like, high-octane or anything. Like, they're still very drawn out. Not the sort of content that Jacksepticeye is making, so what are you talking about? It's a review of a game. Yeah, it's a review. And it's also, like... It's a review. A lot of it really is just, like, my live reaction of something happening in a game, and then I'm just, you know, reacting to it. Like, to give an example... Like, for context, I'm saying. It really is just, like... It's completely different. I mean, it's a completely different genre. I would feel like you'd almost be... You wouldn't want to be comparing it, because he's just sitting there playing it. You catch so much shit, which is deserved, by the way, <laughs> all the shit you catch. But then when you finally actually do something which is a little bit better than just gaming some video game, you're like, no, 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 it's the same thing. What the fuck is the matter with you? He played a game for... I mean, the God of War thing he uploaded. He played the game for 40 hours, let's say. It gets cut down to 20. There's no... Nothing's been done in that. He's just playing the game. You're doing all that before you even write the script. I think the point I was trying to make is like when he said that, you know, Let's Plays are kind of fell off a bit. That The point I was trying to make is like the game reviews are still talking and playing through a video game. And those videos are like some of the most viewed content on my channel. So, but I, yeah, I guess there's a bit of a difference between like the game reviews and then just actual full on Let's Play. With so much a dead little, air as well. A slight little difference. I, I, yeah, because I guess even though like those videos I do are so drawn out, like there is 
always something there, like me talking or something. There isn't just dead air of like me walking down less sad corridor. I think streaming is a big factor in this as well. Obviously, like streaming video games, live streaming them was not as big as it is it today. To so obviously well. that's taken quite a, a considerable amount of the audience there. But yeah, no, I do feel like there is evidence to suggest as well, in addition to this, that YouTube have been diminishing that let's play genre of content within the algorithm. I mean, isn't the algorithm based on what people are watching too, though? So it's maybe less people are watching it. So that way. I mean, this is the whole point with Jacksepticeye saying like Mr. Beast has ruined YouTube either because directly or indirectly through other people who are trying to emulate what Mr. Beast is doing. I felt that that was fucking nonsense because I think if anyone has fucking ruined YouTube and if YouTube is even ruined, YouTube did that themselves by trying to manipulate the algorithm for reasons unbeknownst to most people, though people have their own fucking theories, whether they be political or ethical or whatever, that YouTube have been influencing things behind the scenes to promote certain types of content, certain types of people. I think that certain YouTubers were also blackballed for various reasons and diminished within the algorithm, and I think there's evidence to suggest that. I mean, obviously he's banned now. Leafy is here, completely removed. But I think he was. I think he was being phased out a long, long time before he actually got he terminated probably on was YouTube. Probably also pulling up all the flags of all his language usage. You know, like this is before. This is before all that. This is before terms of service changed. Who do we want to slowly phase out from YouTube? Who can we shadow ban? Who can we blackball? And I think Leafy was one of those people that was mentioned at this meeting, along with some others. I mean, again, there is also some evidence to suggest that this meeting occurred because there was a whistleblower who said that exactly this happened. He was invited to YouTube headquarters, a YouTube meeting, and he, he sat down at this meeting and he said that, yeah, YouTube discussed people like Leafy is here, Keemstar, and problematic people at the time. This is going back to 2016 and 17. And how can we phase them out? I remember Everyone that. always says, like, we don't shadow ban, we don't do this. And then when Twitter, you know, Twitter files were leaked and showed what? exactly that. So I'm 100% convinced. I mean, I cannot prove it, but like, no one will ever be able to prove what, it. Unless wasn't that some why fucking the dislikes YouTube, were removed? Can I finish what I'm saying? Some fucking whistleblower from YouTube themselves who was hired by YouTube, like a high up staff member, comes out and says probably something has about it. it. They but, probably have uh, NDAs as well. So, not the same meeting, but wasn't there a meeting at YouTube where dislikes got removed as well because of like a literal who YouTube yeah, they basically asked a just bunch had some pull? They asked a bunch of YouTubers about it and Quite a few people literally said this is a bad idea and then they're just like, ah, it's not. But also people said that it was a very good idea because they didn't like getting dislike bombed. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. The ones they interviewed were all the old YouTubers that had fallen off and were getting lots of dislikes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's her name? Lily Singh or whatever. YouTube is now way more negative than it was back when the dislikes existed. That's evidence by yeah, the comments. We've section. talked about it. Yeah. I mean, even when they removed dislikes. When they first removed it, that's what we said was going to happen. The exact and take. I think, yeah, yeah, we all did. That's what it was, was going to happen. If they don't that's have the happened. outlet with the little dislike button, they will take it to the comments. And yep. that's what they did. <laughs> Basically, it's YouTube's fault, right? So YouTube ruined YouTube is the big takeaway Oh, yeah. There. My big conclusion <laughs> is Mr. Beast didn't ruin shit. The people imitating Mr. Beast didn't ruin shit. Or well, they did. If anyone did. did ruin shit. No, they didn't. If anyone Let's did not ruin shit, any. I'm not giving them credit. I'm saying, I mean, they <laughs> suck. I'm never going to watch that shit. Well, I don't watch Mr. Beast either because it's not my type of content. And I'm not five years old. Pyro fan. I like how you keep calling my viewers five years old just because yours are 30 year old women with septum piercings that donate hundreds of dollars to you every stream. Hoping they'll be able to get with you. I don't know how 30-year-old women with septum piercings are my audience. If you have a septum piercing as a woman, you're probably mentally ill, and that's your audience. So your audience are either mentally ill fucking retards or children. Little babies. <laughs> what was what was the uh what did Jay put in again? Like oldest colossal viewer, and it was just Betty White. <laughs> no, it was youngest colossal viewer. <laughs> Even if it was true and my subscribers are all 40 plus it would still be better than having five-year-olds on mummy's ipad yeah so if you're an old woman or if you have a septum piercing join the patreon and <laughs> donate today you can join the minecraft server and be made fun of and murdered by us and harassed in the discord server oh yeah it's a minecraft server <laughs> and there's an exclusive episode every month where we'll can say slurs. Slurs. <laughs> hooray colossal actually has opened every episode with a slur can you say it 
Oh no, because it's not the fucking Patreon episode, is it? Uh, fucking retard. Yeah, it's true. They got to pay the five dollars to hear. <laughs> <laughs>